Hey YouTube, Satoshi Matrix here yet again bringing you another video. Welcome to the Controller Chronicles, the series where I showcase the best gaming controllers for consoles new and old. This time I'm going to be talking about a controller for the Sega Genesis. When the Sega Genesis launched in 1989, it came with this controller. This is the original three button, red button controller that launched with the system. Um, this was a pretty revolutionary design at the time. Very large and comfortable to hold. It has three face buttons that are so large that are called triggers. It has a start button and a much better D-pad than came with the Sega Master System. But there's a problem. The Sega Genesis would be known to have extreme li or have, a, have an extreme number of shoot 'em up games, and shoot 'em up games um, are games that require you to press the button a lot. You, know, you constantly are pressing whatever button is the fire button, unless you can hold it down. But not every game does that. Now, when the uh, when NEC launched the Turbo Graphics, they included um, Rapid Fire built right into the controller. But this wasn't the case with the Genesis. The Sega didn't have this, at least not initially. Eventually, Sega came up with their own first-party controller that they called the Mega Fire. This thing here is essentially exactly the same as the original three-button controller. In fact, it's the same same size, same shape, same feel, and it's officially licensed and it's made by Sega. Um, but one thing that does differently is have these turbo switches, which are, when, when they're put all the way down, they're off. In the middle, hold the button down and it's rapid fire and push it up, and now it's auto fire. You don't have to press it at all. Now, one thing that I kind of say it could suck so this controller is the cord length. The cord length on these things are very short. Now, for whatever reason, the first batch of Sega Genesis controllers that Sega produced had uh, about a 3-foot or 4-foot cord, as opposed to the usual 6-foot that we were used to in North America. Now, I don't know why Sega did this, because it's extremely annoying that you have to be so close to the Sega Genesis when you're playing, but they did release controller um, extension cords to address this issue. However, I don't have those, and, you know, they're kind of expensive to buy, around $8, you know, each. But, you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't really want to spend that much. So what I did was I took um, a three-button controller that I had that didn't work, and I went and opened it up, just as standard screws, um, and then I opened up the, the controller, and I desoldered each of the nine wires that connect the, for the cord, and then I found the pin out, and carefully, and very carefully, in fact, um, I discovered um, what works, where, where the wires go, and wired in a six-foot cord into this original one so I don't have to deal with the original um, three-and-a-half or four-foot cord that it came with. So now I have a much better cord. Um, not everyone is proficient at soldering, of course, so if you're not, you can just buy the extension cord and get the same effect. Alright, so I'm going to be showing this controller in action. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to demonstrate um, Sega Genesis game, one of my favorites, Streets of Rage 2. So. Let's put the game in. Go plug the controller in. Again, because it's officially licensed by Sega, it says Sega right on it. Plug that in. Turn it on. And now let's turn to the TV. Choose place. And as usual, you can play this. So this is just standard gameplay without any turbo. So let's put on some turbo.
Well, that'll be it for this time, so thanks for watching, guys, and take care.